Good afternoon. Uh, I first walked to uh, the North Pole when I was 15 years old, and uh, I didn't make it, actually. I, uh, the ocean, uh, the ice had split in front of us, and facing the open ocean, we had to turn back about 15 miles from our goal. Now, I did return uh, twice in the next two years, actually, not just to learn more about the Arctic, but to also learn more about how climate change was impacting society more broadly. And last year, after going to Antarctica for the first time when I was 14, I returned to lead the Willis Resilience Expedition to the South Pole. We crossed Antarctica coast to coast in a custom-built scientific support vehicle and then trekked to the South Pole, breaking the record for uh, the fastest journey on foot in just over 18 days. Now, much more important than all of this, and you know, along the way, I did suffer a chest infection. I lost 26 pounds. Much more meaningful, and much more meaningful, by the way, than these images on the screen, is the data. Along our 1,200-mile route, we came back with uh, hundreds of samples. Uh, and what we were measuring was uh, the concentration of a particular uh, radioactive substance that occurs naturally in the layers of Antarctic surface snow. And we're hoping that by analyzing these samples, we can get a better indication of how some parts of the climate system work and the human impact on it. But there's no time to debate settled science anymore. Our world is entering an unprecedented risk landscape, one that we are really not adequately prepared for, one that we have yet to adequately address. You know, there's a reason why an insurance company sponsored my expedition. It's because a risk-based approach drives action and builds resilience. But at the moment, we're still trying to fight climate change with the tools that were available before I was born. We can drastically cut greenhouse gas emissions by investing in improvements in energy efficiency in buildings and vehicles. A more capable power grid can also help us harness renewable energy while allowing us to stay flexible in times of need and in times of emergency. We have the opportunity in front of us to build revolutionary new infrastructure and reap all the rewards that come with it, just like the railroads spurred on personal and global prosperity 200 years ago. Innovation and invention have always been our greatest strengths. And in the face of global crisis, our technological, our entrepreneurial spirit is the key to building resilience. And we have to ask ourselves, how much longer are we willing to remain vulnerable? Because through collaborative efforts, we can change the path of society. We can inspire economic growth. But we absolutely must start with concrete commi commitments here today in this room and decisive action. Thank you.